in this class we'll talk a little bit about strings I have my project seen open here so what I'll do I'll create a new project for strings and then I'll go into that file the program CS file I'll clean this up so before I do that what I have here is actually a string as we mentioned in our data types lesson and that is in lesson two so what I'll do is there are different ways you can actually play with strings as we saw when we were doing variables on phone we were outputting some certain values to the console let me actually copy this and paste it inside this program and that's what we'll play with all right you see here I'm outputting this and you can recall when I mentioned it in the uh, variables and phone class I called it literal string there are actually many ways to work with strings the first one is you can concatenate a string so you can join strings together in a value so what I did here I could do it in a number of ways okay so I can do this just like gone Let me just copy and paste some stuff over here. My second number goes here. some way to do it okay this is one way to do it and what this does is it concatenates the string it means it joins them together the way I output them so let me just give a little bit of space in between them here so that it's neater to the heights all right and this is another way to do it this is the literal string way there's also the placeholder method and how this works is I input a string here so I'll say the sum of so I'll say it as an array placeholder the sum of this and this is this so this is the array placeholder method of playing with strings and these three work the same way. So what I need to add here is go ahead and put in my first number, my second number, and my sum. So what happens is the compiler picks these values and assigns them inside this placeholders. So if I were to go ahead and run this, And input a number input another number you will see that they work just the same way it's just the ease of doing it that differs so you can go ahead and pick any preference that works for you working with strings another thing you can do is in C sharp we have some reserved characters uh, or we might want to literally do some things that are reserved words in C sharp I might want to use them for example Let's talk about escape sequences. All right, so what I'll do is, let's say I want to do a new tab, okay? So what I'll do is, console the right line. I am a, normally if you wanted to that, you press a lot of spaces in between, but instead of doing that, you can use the escape sequence dash T. And what this does is that it creates a new tab on the console so what I'll do uh, before going ahead is actually go ahead and comment this out so that it does not tamper with what we want to run so let's run this and we'll see our output string will actually have a lot of spaces in between as you can see this is the space in between them 
also I can decide to work with a new line and say console right line I am on a new line and then work with that as you can see this new started on another line entirely so this slash n is an escape sequence slash t is also an escape sequence there are actually a lot of them in c sharp so you can get to the c sharp documentation and read me about escape sequences also you can act with a string literal this way say for example if i wanted to uh, use an apostrophe uh normally what i'll need to do is use the apostrophe escape sequence uh so i'll do this um so normally i would have to use this okay so what this does is output this small string that i have over here this that i have over here this string is what i want to output so what i'll do if i run this is i get that single string if i also want to work with um some characters for example this character here is reserved it denotes the end and start of a string if i wanted to output that what i would do is use the except sequence of that character inside my code and i can see the output right here so that's a little bit of about strings also uh we can i mentioned in essence when we're working with data types that a string is actually an array of characters it's a collection of characters so let's say i have an input here uh I have a string equals let me use my name I can actually output the first value of the array we'll talk a little bit more about array when we get into collections in generics so I can actually output the first sequence that means what this will output out is a character D all right I just wanted to show us in this video on how that feels like you can see it only updated the if i have to change this to output the third character in the sequence that this will output the fourth character that will be a and this is just to whet your appetite into expecting uh more when we get into uh connections and generics so that is it about strings uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about it uh i'll see you in the next class